Hey there, Kendall here. I'm going to start you guys off with showing you exactly where we're at. bungalow that you guys see right here is where Addison and I are staying. That's our bungalow. You can see just how close we are to the beach. We're actually right next to the main house where there's a restaurant and coffee and bar and all that good stuff. And over here, pool. Let's so look down dock. I'm going to just walk you guys over and let you see just a little bit of the area. Give a little bit of social media love to Portofino. As you can kind of see. We got the bar over here. Got the pool. So, go back here to where I'm sitting a little bit away from everything. Here's my spot. We actually are waiting on, hold on, let me get back to you guys. Hey, um, we're actually waiting on our golf cart to be delivered. We're going to be taking a golf cart down the main road into town today and just run around in town and enjoy the sights and sounds and food. We already started our day. We had a nice slow start, which is actually I thought that about the title to today's Conscious Coffee um, this morning at like six o'clock when my alarm went off and I took this amazing picture from the bed because we slept with the doors open last night. The big double doors coming out from the bed and we just had those open and the cool breeze coming in and it was just, it was so nice. It was so, so nice. And at six o'clock, my alarm went off and I was like, ugh, ugh, six o'clock alarm. Don't want the six o'clock alarm. So, um, yeah, slept with the doors wide open and I took this amazing picture. Sent off to my guy and everything about, about just, you know, like this is the way to wake up. <laughs> and, oh, speaking of him, here he is, hi Steve. Um, and I just was laying there and I was like, you know, I'm not ready to get up. I'm not ready to get up. And I thought a slow start, a slow start is just like, it's needed sometimes. It is so needed to just start slow in life, start slow on your day when you have that opportunity. And I was like, that's a really great title to Conscious Coffee. So here we are hours later because we got a little extra slow start in. We've just been kind of just gingerly moving through the day at just this, you could say a snail's pace. A snail's pace for probably the way Addison and I roll on typical days because we're always just boom, 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 moving through stuff. And my life is always so crazy and chaotic with all the amazing relationship rich things that I have going on. But getting away like this definitely just allows you to kind of just slow your pace down, slow your roll. If we were doing the whole um, conscious coffee thing, right? I just kind of <laughs> slow it down and, and relax. But as I was thinking about it, it really came into me that one of the basic principles that I teach, I want like the palm trees behind me. Hold on, you guys aren't getting a great view here. I don't know, is that a better view? I'm trying to get you guys like ocean view here. Hold on. There we go, okay, that's a good view. Got palm trees that way. Okay, <laughs> all right. So, one of the things that I teach people a lot, and this goes back to my Kabbalistic studies, is to hire slow and fire fast. And this is really in relationship a lot of the time. I've been talking a lot about relationship lately, 
and you know just different aspects of it and different things to think about and this is a really really important thing because you know I get asked a lot about you know how do I know it's time to break up how do I know if this is the one how do I know if I should start dating again how do I how do I how do I and one of the things that's really important to move in to relationship with is to move slowly into any relationship it is really vital for your happiness and for proper choice making to move into a relationship slow. So this is where we call it hiring slow, but firing fast. And think about it. The majority of the time when we move into a relationship, we we connect with somebody and we get turned on and we're like, yes, yes, yes. And we're a yes to them, but we don't really know them, do we? We don't really know them, so of course we're a yes to them because we don't know all their little kinks and weird things and things that we probably don't like and all that. But we're really turned on to what we are seeing on the front side. And then you move down the road a couple months, a couple years, and all of a sudden you're like, I'm not too fond of this person. But then we're committed. Then we have bought a house together. We've bought a car together. We've had a kid together. We've said, I do. We've done all these different things, right? And now we have all of this responsibility as well. So the getting out of a relationship takes a lot longer because we're not as hasty to make that move. And we have a lot of great reasons as to why we're not going to move out of the relationship. So we need to plan it out. We need to be safe about it. We don't want to, you know, totally uproot our lives. We don't want to, I, I know that I know some people that, you know, you get into business together and it's like, I don't want to sacrifice my whole livelihood. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut about the relationship. Maybe I should just keep my mouth shut here and not, and not move forward. Just, just suck it up for a while longer while I make my plans. In truth, what ends up happening is we create a really toxic experience for both parties, all parties, if there's children involved. If there's a business involved, we tend to cause a lot of toxicity in the business itself. And we, we're not doing anybody favors. And we're not doing people favors because we're moving so slowly out of it. But what we need to be doing is we need to act hastily on the moving out. And I'm not saying, oh, you pissed me off, I'm out of here. No. This is like when you just know your gut knows that it's time to move forward, but then waiting that five years is probably not the smartest thing to do. Make your plans a little bit more quickly and fire the situation, fire the person, fire the relationship a lot quicker instead of taking the next 10 years to get out of something where you are spending 10 years of your life unhappy, okay? And on the front side, you're less likely to fire, and this is, I've, I've done this whole thing of hire quick couple times over I have learned this lesson repeatedly because I am that thick-headed and I speak this from a point of, of personal experience here I was that girl one time that got my heart broke and six months later found herself married and 20 years five years into the marriage with kid number three on the way in a different in a different state you know, with a business that was being built with both of our names on it and having my whole world wrapped up in this. Woke up one morning and went, who the fuck am I? What has happened to my life? I'm not happy. I don't want this relationship. I don't want this life. But I'm now stuck and I have to now stay in it because I have three other lives dependent on me. I have to try to keep this going. And I kept it going for another like 12 years, but that was not 12 positive years for children, for partner, or for self. And it wasn't positive even for my financial state of being because I was not happy. I was not turned on to who I was. I was not confident in who I was because I was not being authentic. I wasn't being true to myself. And what ended up happening was I ended up crashing everything. And Oh, with it went, went the finances, with it went my health, with it went relationship with, with, you know, the friendship that I did have with my partner. It really started to dwindle and it just ended up this nasty, nasty, toxic situation. But man, we could say that we really hung on and we did this and we did that for our children's sake. So it was a really quick hiring process for both of us. And it was a really long firing process for both of us. 
of which I am a firm believer that, you know, if I had listened to my gut on the front side of that, I should have slowed down and not and not allowed my heartbreak to move me into a, a wounded situation. You know, fast forward, I ended up in other situations where I, I jumped the gun, not learning that lesson, not knowing it. I ended up dating people and got my heartstrings wrapped up and caught up with other people where it was just like, okay. And then moved into another relationship and did the same repeat where I found myself, boom, you know, from here to here. Now it was a little bit longer of a process. I didn't fully commit in the ways that I did the first time. I learned from the from the first relationship a little bit more. And then I was like, no, okay, I'm gonna slow this process down. I'm not going to completely get in here. I'm going to allow myself to slow down some. But I still, in my opinion, went too fast on that second serious boat there. You know, and then moving into into other relationships, I look at where I like went slow. And the slower I went, I got to receive the other person and show myself also. And then, you know, six, seven, eight months into the relationship, realized I'm glad that I didn't move quickly here. I'm glad I didn't go and do the things that you could, that one might do typically because, wow, this I'm a F no to. I'm really not a yes to this. I'm really not a yes to that. These are like major players in the relationship that I'm not good with. Thank goodness I listened to my gut here and I didn't move so steadily into something. So that moving slow process. Now, this also plays a role in, in life in general. Uh, it plays a role definitely in our finances. I think that we beat ourselves up a lot for moving slow on things. Addison and I were just talking business over breakfast this morning. We were talking about social media growth. And I was sharing that last year this time, I was sitting at like 1,700 likes on my coaching page. And I remember just, you know, just going, how am I going to grow my page? I'm not moving fast enough. I'm not moving fast enough. And I was just like, ah, you know, and it was like everything I tried didn't work. And I felt like this massive pressure over like, I should be moving at a faster rate of growth and all that kind of stuff. Now fast forward a year later, and I have you know 5,000 more likes on top of that, and I'm growing at a pace that I would not have believed last year. I focused in and I, I looked at what I needed to do, but I got right with consistency. I got right with just knowing that, hey, I'm gonna have, it's, it is this ebb and this flow, but I've gotta work on like what makes me feel good. And the more I do what makes me feel good and feels right in business, then my growth for business just happens so much more easily and fluid and it is a nice consistent growth and it's kind of like meeting your lover just like you know that slow hiring and then you move in and you meet your lover well the people that follow me you guys out there you know and my clients that I gain through the course of the year I've noticed that there's just more true beautiful relationship dynamic happening because it's coming from this space of direct soul from heart instead of a need I'm trying to fill a gap I'm trying to fill this void and if you think about it that's what we do in all relationship right we do this with our partners with our lovers we do this in business and where else do we do it we look for the gap to get filled in our finances too because right we have these gaps and we're like shit my bank account says this my finances say that my credit score says that I need this much money. I need, I need, I need, I need, I need. And when we get into the space of I need, what ends up happening is we make hastily decisions that are made from a wounded spot instead of from a spot that actually feels good from right here. So we stop questioning what makes us feel good, what is right for us, and we move fast into, into things. We make quick judgments and we jump into stuff that we quickly go, ooh, I shouldn't have committed to that. Ooh, I shouldn't have put that out there. Ooh, I really shouldn't have taken that job. Ooh, I shouldn't have said that I was gonna do this, this, this. But when we come from things, from the space of need, when we come at it from the space of, of that void, because we do, we get these voids in, in all relationship and this empty space and we're taught that void is unhealthy, that void is dangerous, that void is scary, that void means that we're not valuable, we're not worthy, that we're missing something, that we're incomplete. 
I mean, how many times have you heard in a Hollywood movie or in a romance novel or a poem or something or a song where it goes, you complete me. Okay, you're already complete. Whether it is your love relationship, whether it is your life experience, or it is your financial experience, you are complete. And when you get right with being complete in that way, that you don't really actually need all this stuff that you think you need, that you can be happy right now. Because happiness is a choice. It has nothing to do with your surroundings, okay? Granted, my surroundings are amazing right this very second. But I was happy before I got here, okay? I was happy at home. I was happy with my, and I carpets me clean, but I can tell you what, I was happy with my dirty carpets. I was happy with my dirty laundry. I was happy with the chaos that I had going on over the last couple weeks. I was happy with, you know, the ups and the downs, the ebbs and the flows. I was happy in my exhaustion. I was happy with the up, with all that stuff that was coming, which makes this moment right now happy too. There's plenty of people that end up in beautiful destinations that take these holidays, these vacations, and they sit around in their destination and they can't even embody the moment. They can't be there with the moment because they still have the void. The void, it's going to be with you no matter how much you fill it, okay? It does not matter how much you eat, how much you drink, how much medicine you take, how many drugs you smoke, how much, you know, alcohol or, or sex you have, how much you gamble, how much, how big you build your business. How many people you've slept with, how many people you're not sleeping with, how much you go to church, how much you don't go to church, how much you do anything, how much, how many, you know, degrees you have, how much money is in the bank. If you have a void, that void is there because of how you actually feel about yourself. How much compassion, how much grace can you give yourself, how much love can you give yourself, how much, how much can you look in the mirror and go, I really like the person that I am and the person that I am becoming because I know that I'm ever evolving into something so much more and yet I am everything right now. And when you can get to that point where you can just say, I'm really good with me right now and I'm good with me right now and I'm good with me right now. And I am so excited and so desiring everything that is coming, but I don't need anything more. That is where you find the magic. That is where you get into this space of true beauty happening and, and life just kind of going, okay, here you go, here you go. Here's, here's another beautiful moment, here's another beautiful moment. But when you get into the space that a lot of people live in, and you look at it and you go, okay, I am going to, oh my God, hold on, you guys see this. See the lizard, everybody? He's just like walking through. Okay, sorry. Okay, I had to show you the little lizard. He just like all of a sudden just popped up. Um, most of us live our lives though in this state of never enough we live in a state of of wanting and feeling that our wanting is all need based and going well maybe this will make me happy maybe this will make me happy and it's because we're looking for the quick fixes it's because we're trying to hire things really really quick in our life and quick fixes never some i mean they can work temporarily temporarily they can ease some pain temporarily. They can make us feel good temporarily. But it's all an illusion. It's all an illusion. You have to get into that space of slowing the fuck down and embodying yourself and breathing into the moment and just giving yourself the space to fall in love with your life. Because this is your life. This is the only life that you're gonna be able to partake in at least this run through, right? And getting right with it and being in love with it no matter what is coming and seeing that everything, even when we perceive it to not be good, even when we perceive it to be chaotic and stressful, overwhelming, scary, it's there for a reason. It is moving us more and more into who we are. It is providing us the opportunity to know ourselves more 
to desire more, to enjoy more, to have better clarity. But you're only going to gain that clarity. You're only going to gain that true desire and that knowing of who you are when you can come a step back and witness from heaven's eyes exactly where your life is going and how beautiful even those hard spots can be. And that means that you have to slow down. That means that you have to slow down and just take it all in and realize that as personal as it might be, that it's not personal. It is life that is always flowing, always moving, always changing, always developing, and that you get to create in it. But it is what you apply your attention to that you will gain in the long run, okay? So, okay guys, I kind of feel closure around that idea. Like I've got my words out on it for this morning. Not to mention Addison needs to go do Addison Unleashed. So, watch Addison Unleashed real soon. Coming to you from... Oh, you want to see something? Watch this. <laughs> Addison, on the swing. <laughs> Getting ready for Addison Unleashed. Being my ninja. Okay. Did she flip me off? Did anybody catch her flipping me off? <laughs> no. I know let you guys go. Um, if I said anything on this conscious coffee that touched you, made you think of somebody, made you go, aha, hey, I have a friend, a sister, a brother, uh, somebody who needs to hear this because, man, they jump in and out of relationship like no other. Or they are cons, they're sitting in a relationship that they got stuck in really quick, but now, you know, five years later, they're just like pulling their hair out. Well, then get them this message. If you are having, you know, any ideas about like, well, how do I, how do I escape what I've built around? What do I do here? How do I find that strength, that self-esteem? How do I give myself compassion? How do I do some of the things that you talk about? Reach out to me for one-on-one -on -one coaching because guess what? I do that worldwide global coaching for anybody around these topics and more. Of course, it is all about creating that fuck yes life, right? And that fuck yes life it has a lot to do with the relationships that we have with our lovers, with ourselves, with spirits, with our finances, with our overall life picture. That is what a fuck yes life is, is to have it in every category. But you know, it doesn't always mean that we've got this perfect, perfect picture of, like, like I always, I steal this thing from, I can't remember what his name is, but I stole this a long time ago, so it's mine, right? It's, you know, life can't always be about organic chocolates, roses, and wine, but it can be about your bliss no matter what the moment is, and that's where that fuck yes life kind of comes in, is to be able to see things in that category that you just know. You just know with certainty that even when it gets a little rocky, it gets a little stormy, that it's still perfect and that it still is part of your fuck yes experience. So reach out to me for details on that. If you are local to the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we have a tantric puja coming up on, oh shoot, Addison, is it the 22nd? I think it is the 22nd. We have a small group tantric puja that is coming up on the 22nd of of October and that is going to be focused on sex and sensuality and playfulness it is going to be a very very fun experience uh, very connective we're going to be teaching some basic 101 tantric pra um, practices there it is small group focused uh, go check it out excuse me go check it out at the link provided in the comment section and as always thank you for all your likes your loves uh, sending you much, much love from this beautiful day in Belize to wherever you might be. I'm going to give you one more little trip around the island here, and then I will catch you tomorrow with another conscious copy. You can always follow me at www.kendallwilliams.com. Here's a little bit of the island. Hey guys, I will catch you tomorrow.